Hello and welcome to part two of setting up the storage shelf uh, by NetApp and this video is going over a bit about how we might set up FreeNAS to work with it. Welcome back. So the biggest thing you can see on screen now is that all the disks present themselves with the specific LSI card that we have in there. It's flashed to just act as an HBA. So uh, all of the uh, hard drives are presenting straight to the operating system. FreeNAS can see them individually. Um, it, they're not hidden behind it like any specific uh, RAID configuration or anything. So everything gets to be set up here in FreeNAS. So we got all our disks as you can see here. So the first thing that we can do um, is add our uh, pool um, and then just give it a few seconds and then all the disks should populate there. All right, what I'm gonna do is select six at a time. I'm gonna call this uh, VOL1 for volume one. I'm going to move these over um, and I'm going to hit create. Uh, that's in RAID Z2, so that's fine, confirm. This is going to take a moment, so I'll cut the video when I'm done talking, but uh, the reason why I'm doing six at a time is because now, instead of going through the exact steps you just saw, I, there's an actual second button where I can extend the pool itself. Uh, and that will let me uh, have virtual devs, I believe it's called. Uh, but basically, uh, with the 24 drives that are in there, uh, you'll be able to have, I think, four of them, right? And, or five, uh, whatever the amount comes out to be, um, each with six drives in them. Now, overall, that's eight drives that you can lose, uh, but not all in one VDEB, which wouldn't make sense. There's only six in each VDEB anyway, but uh, two in each of the virtual devs, but overall, that's eight. So what that means is that um, the virtual devs are all striped together. In, uh, but in, but individually they're RAID Z2. So I, in my, if you're confused, uh, there are plenty of articles about how RAID and stuff works, but uh, as simply as I can, um, the with the parity on all the drives, that's two drives you can lose uh, in each VDEB, but overall a total of eight drives. Uh, so once this is done, uh, we'll come right back into the video anyway so what I want to do right now because I haven't tested this I want to make a data set call it um, DS1 and if I make eight more I'll have DS9 haha <laughs> if you get that reference thank you uh, please don't shame me uh, anyway so um, I think I just have to name that. There's really nothing in advanced features that I want right now. Uh, there was something in there maybe about creating a recycle bin, uh, but uh, I can worry about that later. I'm just going to hit save. Uh, that'll give me a data set. Now what I want to see is when I expand the volume, if the available storage for the data set expands too. Um, I tested the expansion before I made this video, but I didn't test to see if um, the available amount, this specific uh, on the screen that I'm highlighting, this specific number for the data set will expand with the volume. Uh, so I'm go let's show you how to expand the volume. So this little cog under storage, then pulls over here on the right hand side with this cog. Uh, we can go to extend and this warning message lets us know that um, each of those virtual devs should be the same size so I can confirm continue and I can pick another six so one two three four five six I believe that's yes uh, and then it's going to do raid z2 uh, and then I can just hit extend uh, letting me know all the disks will erased and whatever extend pool uh, so this should extend the pool now uh, the reason why this is pretty cool is because if you have 
um, and it's something to think about is if you want to buy six discs at a time, for instance, which let's just say six discs at a time is a sweet spot. You know, it's a good number for RAID Z2. Um, you don't have to do that all at once, particularly what I want to do, which is to fill that thing up with Seagate Iron Wolf drives that are six terabytes each. That total cost would be about thirty eight hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. You know, that's like the price of a very high end gaming workstation build that you'd use for editing video. I mean, you could play games on it, I'm sure, but like very like heavy creation work, right? Getting um, six at a time, which is about 940 bucks, whatever that works out to be right now. I, at the time of filming, they're about 160 bucks, give or take. NAS rated too, which is important because right in here I'm testing with just WD Blue drives, just some leftover stuff we've got. Um, and what isn't in the video is um, I've actually been running this for a, a week or a few weeks now and um, copying large files over put some of the drives in a degraded state so I have to go in and um, uh, 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 wipe them and then we you know let them be replaced and regenerate the data so um, you know, redundancy is cool but like you know you want to use new drives you don't want to just use uh, stuff you have laying around because um, especially if you want to use it for important stuff I do YouTube videos so uh, and not just this channel but other channels um, and I, I just I just make videos for other reasons um, and I take pictures uh, you know for photography so I need reliable storage I, I don't want to have to be doing this as a hobby and like oh if a something fails in a degraded state it doesn't really matter right now I you know you want to make sure that if important data is uh, you also have a backup another backup but um, uh, it, because uh, RAID is not a replacement for backup it's redundancy not a backup so uh, you still want to have three backups for the most important documents of your life you know a social security card picture or whatever or your tax information or whatever um you want to have two independent backups locally on like uh, not like just on the same computer but like uh maybe you you print a physical version if that's the, if that's a, a a format that is printable or you have like a cd that's been burned to over here and a hard drive over there but then a third backup that's off-site so in case of a, a physical disaster uh, you still have a third backup that's somewhere else, uh, whether that is through like uh, you know a Microsoft solution or, or Google solution for the consumer, um, or, or or just some portable hard drive you bought that you keep one at work and then one at your house. Uh, that's best practice for the most important doc things you can't lose. That's the best practice for how to uh, keep that data safe. Uh, Having uh, some RAID, uh, RAID array that could fail, especially if you're using a RAID card that's handling the RAID and not exposing the drives to something like uh, FreeNAS, um, you know, if this starts writing bad data and, you, and it doesn't know, you could lose everything. So it's really important that you, as you're watching this, you understand that RAID is not a replacement for actual backups. Um, you can lose a lot of data that way. Uh, there was a famous line in a TV show, uh, you don't fa uh, um, plan to fail, you fail to plan. Uh, so let's add the second set of six. So one, two, three, one, two, three. We will move these over. Raid Z2, we can hit extend. All right, welcome back. Um, all the drives have been added to the storage for a total of uh, 6.98 terabytes um, we can uh, check to see the status uh, and we are can see visually what I meant by each um, uh, a drive in the pool one two three four five six seven so uh, RAID Z2 um, contains yeah, six drives each so that means you can lose two as I described before um, and um, each of these and you can see their little drop downs here so each of these are striped so the whole thing is striped across these 
hierarchical parts, but individually within each grouping of the array Z2. So this is what I mean by like you can lose two, four, six, eight drives in total, assuming that no more than two drives per virtual dev is lost. Uh, so you're playing some statistical odds there, right? You know, if you lose three drives but they're on one of these, the whole thing's gone. I definitely recommend you do it with new drives starting out, especially if the information is valuable. Anyway, if you like that video, um, hit like, subscribe. Um, I try to do these things. I'm, I like I like doing them. I want to do more. For instance, um, how to set up a domain controller, or you know how to set up DHCP server, or you know a, an MDT server, which is Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Uh, which can be very handy and um, just a bunch of different things I would like to do so uh, if you have anything in particular you want covered put it down in the comments below um, and I'll be you know happy to give it a go so um, after I learn about it <laughs> if I don't already uh, anyway have a good one and I will see you next time bye